Yo, those motherfuckers came from my library and I wasn't even there. So here's the story from the, from the Okefenokee Regional Library in Wake Rush, Georgia. In 2022, the library decided to put out a string of rainbow flags for Pride Month. And they got such a positive response from the LGBTQ community, who, let's face it, they're not super used to feeling welcome in Wake Rush, Georgia, that they decided to just leave those up year round. And so predictably, a couple of fundamentalist Christian assholes freaked the hell out about it. And in rural South Georgia, fundamentalist Christian assholes have a lot of dick to swing. So pretty soon, a coalition of churches started a campaign to get them removed. They'd be damned if their library was going to be welcoming and inclusive. And the library wasn't looking to pick a fight. So ultimately, they decided to remove the flags and not put them out again until Pride Month. But... They still wanted to send that message of inclusiveness that was so important to their LGBTQ patrons. So they put up a mural that says libraries are for everyone. And below that, there's these little stick figures representing different identities. There's a figure in a wheelchair, a figure in a hijab. There's white figures, black figures, brown figures. And one of them is a figure holding a rainbow striped heart. Well, the local bigots took that as a poke in the eye and they redoubled their efforts. They demanded that A, that mural be taken down, B, that mural not be replaced with some other gay shit again. We already fell for that one. And C, that, and yes, this was included in their fucking petition, the library's policies be changed so that trans people have to pee in the wrong bathroom. And there was a huge fucking fight about this for over a year. Lawsuits were threatened. Christians protested. People showed up at the library in goddamn Proud Boys t-shirts to intimidate the librarians. Funding was withheld from the library for reasons the city's commissioners swear have nothing to do with the mural. That would be a clear and obvious violation of free speech, so it couldn't be that. Anyway, like so many stories about prejudice in the state of fucking Georgia, the bigots won. Last week, the board voted to take down the mural. Local churches had successfully bullied the library into rescinding their everyone is welcome here message. And LGBTQ people in this city were reminded of their place. Now, you might be wondering why you're just hearing about this now. Right? Like, after all, the scathing community could have probably lent meaningful support to this effort. There was a legal defense fund for the library that you could have contributed to. There was a petition to save the mural that you could have signed. And at the very least, we could have overwhelmed the bigots in their online arguments about this. And here I am just telling you about it after the fact. Why? Because I'm also just learning about it. Religious bigots have been fighting social justice in my hometown, and the epicenter is less than a mile from my fucking house, and I didn't hear about it until it was over. And believe me, I've been kicking myself hard over that. You know, there was a public comments period. There was a meeting where they invited members of the community to come speak for or against the mural. I could have diatribed right in those homophobic Jesus freaks fucking faces on the record. And they'd have had no choice but to take it. And I missed my fucking window. I missed it because I know more about anti-trans legislation in Tennessee and anti-gay legislation in Florida and anti-atheist legislation in Washington, D.C. than I do about what's going on in the town I live in. And since I learned about that the other day, I've been asking myself a lot of whys. Like most towns, ours doesn't really have a local paper that you can subscribe to anymore. And sure, there are Facebook community groups that I could belong to and local meetups that I could attend, but I don't. And it's because, get this, I don't feel welcome at them. There's always a bunch of Christian bullshit. I can't join a local Facebook group without being inundated with God help me so much today and my church is seeking funds and Jesus loves you bullshit. The constant stream of Christianity bigotry and Christian bigotry has driven me out of every local group I've ever joined in this area. But that's the point, isn't it? The whole idea is to be exclusionary. That's why they want to put the Ten Commandments out front of the fucking courthouse and in God we trust on the wall and have a prayer before the meeting. These are all different ways of telling the non-Christians that we are unwelcome in our hometowns, that we have no role to play in the city's governance, that we are forever outsiders. The whole reason people take to these Facebook groups to profess their love of Jesus is to push out the non-Christians. And even for a person like me, it worked. When the LGBTQ community in my town needed my voice, I was home hiding from all their Jesus shit. Look, as I'm coming to realize, for a lot of us, we're all the watchdog our towns have. With the death of local papers, if you live in a town of less than 40,000, 50,000 people, 
you might well represent the entirety of that town's available secular activism. And that's why Christians are working really hard to keep you away from the city's meetings and friends of the library groups and every other civic organization that might help you keep abreast of all the fucked up shit their theology is doing. You know, online organization is great. It offers a like-minded community in places where geography would never allow for that. But we do still have to be active on a local level, even if that means seething our way through the occasional invocation or opening prayer. And even if you have to be the only atheist in the room. Of course, that's when the online community is at its best, right? Because you can call on those resources in ways that can be damn powerful, but you have to know what to do with them first.